Welcome to labminutes.com. In this video, we will look at remote access IPsec VPN on a Cisco router with a pre-share key and certificate authentication using an easy VPN software client. In addition, we will look at NAT transparency, CTCP, also known as IPsec over TCP, and how to allow local subnet to be accessed by the client when you have a non-split tunnel scenario. So in this lab setup, we have an R1 being a head-end device, a client software installed on a PC, sitting behind a router R2 on the right-hand side here, and R2 is performing port address translation, and the client will try to establish a VPN tunnel to R1 as it tries to access VLAN 32 on the left-hand side. Okay, first we're going to get on to the a PC that has the software client install and we're going to try to ping the head end router IP which is 111.10 as you can see from this physical topology 111.10 you can see we can ping successfully so it has connectivity now we're going to start our config on the router R1. Okay, show you the IP address 111.10. First, we will enable AAA since we're going to be doing XAuth as part of the client authentication. So log in, call it authn. And we're just going to do local authentication. And we will also do AAA authorization network author. Also, we're going to get the, all the attributes locally. Next, we'll create a username for our user to log in. Call user with password Cisco. Then we create a IP address pool that will be allocated to the client when it connects. Here we give it a subnet 172.16.100 with the range starting from dot 32 up to dot 63. We're going to start off with a split tunnel configuration so we need to specify the access list we call easy VPN split tunnel ACL that's only permits uh, VLAN 32 subnet across the tunnel okay next we're going to start with uh, phase one uh, ISACAM policy so crypto ISACAMP policy 10 with the encryption AES. And we're going to choose the one with the longest key length, 256. With the type of authentication of pre share key using group 2 and hash of SHA. And the default lifetime is just going to not touch that. Okay, next we're going to do crypto isocamp keep alive, keep alive with the 10 being the interval and the retry of three times. Okay, next we do crypto isocamp xauth timeout. And we say we want to use five second timeout. Okay, then we define the crypto isocamp client config group called easy VPN group. And this is the group name that the client will use to lock in. Okay, with all the parameter that will be used in the connection, we we'll start with the ACL. And this is the split tunnel ACL we defined earlier, easy VPN ST ACL. We don't have backup gateway. 
we're going to be using banner. So the banner will be presented to the client once it's successfully logged in or authenticated. Here banner, the question mark that you see for the delimiting character. So banner C, just going to do a strict and set authorize access only. And this can be pretty much anything you want as far as the um, a warning message. Okay. Next we do DNS 16.32.40. So you got a DNS server IP with the domain of lab minutes dot com include local land we'll, we'll come back and look at that towards the end of the of our lab key here this is the pre-share key we're just going to use Cisco we can also define max login if you want so here we can do five uh, PFS Enable, pull, this mandatory to type the, or assign the address pool to the group. And I believe we call it easy VPN pool. We can also go back and assign net mask if you want. So the IP that was assigned out has to submit mask. I'm just going to do 255, 255, And I think that's pretty much it. We not we don't have Win Server. We're just not going to do split DNS. So that should be it for now. We're not going to allow safe password, unlike the hardware client, that you might want the password to be stored on the client hardware client device. But here it's just a software client, and we want to make sure the user enter the credential every time they're trying to lock in. Okay, next we create a crypto ISACAMP profile called ECVPN ISACAMP profile. Okay, make sure you use self-identity address. Okay, so what else we have? Client authentication list or then so this is for X auth we just turn on X auth and initiate now we just skip that We've got isocam authorization and list we create one call author We can do also keep alive here that will override the global keep alive. 10 retry 3. Uh, we don't have key ring, local address, no. Match. Let's see. We definitely don't want to match identity group. So we tie the profile to identity group or the client group that we just created with easy VPN group. Okay, and then we also want to do client configuration. We already did authentication, so configuration, address, and the server is going to be responding and, and never initiate. Okay, that should be it for phase one. Next, we do the crypto IPsec transform set. Let's do AES256 and have that defined in the name of the transform set itself with, uh, let's see what our options. So I do ESP AES 256 and ESP SHAR HMAP. Okay, next we're gonna do crypto dynamic map. ECVPN with the sequence 10. 
and as you guys know dynamic map is different from the crypto regular crypto map in that the dynamic map you do not specify the peer IPs because they could be coming from any IPs and that's why it's dynamic it's just basically a placeholder with a bunch of configuration defined so one would be a security association lifetime you want to do kilobytes and just do one gig and lifetime can also be a second so an absolute duration or lifetime of the connection we're going to do eight hours next we do set transform set and we have to find a transform set earlier already should keep setting the let's see what else Iscan profile and we call that let's see if we can find that real quick there you go Iscan profile okay do set PFS group 2 and finally we will enable reverse route all right now we tie the dynamic crypto map to a regular crypto map and I'm just gonna put that right at the bottom and make sure it gets a uh, match last so we just give it a, a large sequence number with IPsec, isocamp, dynamic, and the name of the crypto map. And we call it easy VPN map. Okay. And finally we enable the crypto map on the interface. Okay. So as soon as you do that, you get a message isocamp is on. So we know that our IPsec is enabled on the interface FAST01. Okay, so that should be it for the router head end side. Next, we're going to go to the client PC side with the software client installed already. We're going to go ahead and create a new profile. I'm just going to call it. I use the group name for the name of the profile, ECVPN group, with the host being the IPsec head in IPs. He has 111.10. And the group name is ECVPN underscore group with the password. Let's see. Of Cisco. Confirm twice. Before I hit connect, let me clear out the screen and do a Diba Crypto Isocamp. Okay. So here go ahead and save and try to connect. So now as you're trying to connect we get a username password prompt so we now in the xauth uh, phase. And here we have user as a username created and a password Cisco. Okay, so as you as you connect, you get a banner again that we configure with authorized access only string. We go continue, and now we should be connected. So if we go ahead and ping, let me just kind of stop the debug in the background real quick. We'll come back and take a look. So if we ping 172.1632.1. Let's have that going. You can say you can see it's pinging successfully. And we hop onto the switch that's being pinged right now with the debug IP ICMP. And here you can see an echo reply is being sent back to the client, which apparently obtained an IP of 100.32. Okay, so take a quick look at the client interface. Look at the status, and then you can look at the statistic here with the route detail you see that with, uh, since we're doing a split tunnel all we see is the subnet that we define on the split tunnel ACL which is 16.32 subnet if we look at the tunnel 
details. You can see the packet encrypt decrypt. Uh, with encryption of AES-256, authentication HMAC SHA-1, and since we have the or the clients behind a NAT device or a PAT device, it triggers the transparent uh, the NAT transparency features. You can see instead of being a raw IPsec, the traffic gets encapsulated with the UTP with the port 4500. Okay. So we connected successfully. Let me close that out. Go back and take a look at the debug messages. You can see the group name came across first. And this is because by default, when you deal with the easy VPN configuration or setup, the client initiate an aggressive mode instead of main mode. That's why the group number appears right at the beginning of the debug. So the server knows exactly how to identify or match the ID, the group ID, to the group configuration. Okay, so you can see right here it said peer match the ICE Easy VPN ICE account profile. And it agrees upon the transform set. And here the server sent back its identity with the IP address. Okay, I just want to see if we can find the uh, unlock messages that's relevant to the net transparency. So let me see if I can do find and then look for net. Oh, right there. There you go. So you can see as part of the NAT detection, the result comes back and said the hatch does not match. So it does some kind of hashing from the um, that's being sent and what's being received and it compares that. Since it did not match, that means something must have been modified along the way. And that's what's done because uh, the client was behind NAT device. And that's why I said right here, the nose outside NAT. So this is how the head end nose that the client is outside or behind a NAT device and it triggers the port uh, NAT transparency feature with the default port of 4500. Okay. So you can even see the banner that was pushed to the client. All right, so that's the pre-share key authentication. Next we're gonna you are trying to configure the certificate authentication. So the first thing we need to do, actually let me go back and disconnect. And then come back to the router with the crypto ISCAMP policy 10 with the authentication state of pre-share. We're gonna do RSA sick. And then under the Crypto ICAMP profile, easy VPN ICAMP profile. Instead of self identity address, we're going to do self identity FQ DN. And we're going to define what trust point we want to use for the connection that lands on this particular profile. So we already have a trust point created, call LLAM root CA. So the router R1 already has certificate install. Just to show you, show crypto PKI CA, uh, cert rather. So here the router has the r one laminates.com as the name of the certificate as well as the trusted root CA cert. Okay, and we want to make sure since we no longer use the pre share key, we're going to go ahead and remove that from the group. So, easy VPN group, no key, uh, Cisco. Okay. Let's take a look real quick. You got identity, self identity, FQDN, CA trust point with the name, 
everything else should be the same. And now we switch back again to the client. And on the client side, we also have the certificate for the client already installed. So if you go certificate, and that was done through the SSEP enrollment process. So if you were to step through that, you would go certificate enroll. And you need to make sure the certificate server is reachable by the client. Here's where you specify the SSEP URL, domain name, the challenge password. If you go next, here's you, where you specify all the parameters. Okay, so we did all that already and certificate is already installed. If you get certificate view, here you can see our username is called John Doe. It doesn't really matter because these, uh, at this point we're not telling the router to use that as part of authentication. But what's important is the OU, which is show up as department here. It has to match the group name, the easy VPN group name that we created. So we have that. Okay, everything else is just a standard uh, attributes for the certificate. Okay, so next we're going to modify our profile to use the certificate. So instead of group authentication, we're going to do certificate authentication. And here we have the certificate that was previously installed, John Doe. And that should be all you need. So you go save. Uh, connect. Okay, so since we did not disable XAuth, we still get the username prompt. So let me go ahead and do that under the crypto ICCAM profile. So you can find the previous command. And we're just going to disable XAuth for now. So it's up to you if you want to do both certificate authentication as well as the user authentication or not. But here we're just going to disable that. And we'll go back. Try it again. You can see it's already set secure and communications channel. That means your authentication using certificate is going through. And now we've got our banner. Let's just go continue. And our ping should come back in a sec. There you go. So we do show crypto on the router side, ISA, SA detail. Here you see it's using RSIC for authentication right here. Okay, so successfully authenticating using certificate. Next, we're going to look at um, NAT transparency. So now that we have connection up and running, I want to show you um, what the NAT table on R2 looks like. Show IP NAT translation. You can actually see a bunch of them. So because we have made multiple connection, but here you see that it's been using a UDP 4500 and this is just confirmed it with the NAT transparency feature enable. So what we're going to try to do next is to disable NAT transparency and see how things uh, look after that. So let's go ahead and disconnect our VPN um, as well as cleaning up our NAT table. So clear IP NAT translation. Now is how the NAT table should be nice and clean. Okay. Kill that too. All right, and on R1, to disable NAT transparency, you did no crypto IPsec NAT transparency. Okay, and with the UDP encapsulation. So it's just going to tell the router to no longer use the UDP 4500 encapsulation. Okay, so. Now that's now done. That's trying to reconnect with our certificate. Give it a second. Connection succeeded. And let's see if we can still ping uh, across our tunnel. So it looks like it's still working. But let's take a note here. If you go back to the R2 and look at the NAT table. Okay, you see how we no longer see 4500 as a port, but instead 
and also the protocol column at the beginning instead of being a UDP earlier now it's become an ESP so now that the packet is not encapsulated within UDP normally if the router does not support it the connection may fail I mean the connection will succeed but the data or the ESP traffic itself might not get through the router but it's just happened to the Cisco router support IPsec pass through so instead of using a UDP TCP port for the NAT it actually use an SPI okay so if you go and look at R1 and do show crypto IPsec SA and if you note the SPI right here ends with FB now you can see the router is smart enough to grab that value and tie it to the connection so now that you can make multiple connections to the same head ends with multiple client and then know how to mark the, those connection unique in the NAT table by using the SPI okay so that is for NAT transparency for most of the time you probably don't want to disable that I just want to show you what happens if you do so let's put that back next we're going to look at the CTCP or IPsec over TCP so there's an alternative as far as the encapsulation but instead of using UDP we just gonna, we're going to use TCP so for example if for some reason you're in the network where it does, it does not allow um, a client to connect out to internet using an ESP protocol so you may want to circumvent that by using TCP encapsulation for example because most of the networks should allow TCP outbound to internet so in order to do that you do crypto the command is ctcp port and by default is 10,000 which is going to do a non-default of 20,000 here and if you go back to the client side let's disconnect we also need to inform the user to make this change or either that or you make it a default um, config on the profile so you go modify go transport here you see by default it has the IPsec over UDP checked instead of that we're going to do over TCP with the port of 20,000 just to match the head end configuration so we got go ahead and connect it's going through right now and connection succeeded and now ping still work let's take a quick look at the stats now I say here active t on TCP port 20,000 and encrypt decrypt packet works fine okay okay so that's Enabling the TCP or IP over TCP is pretty straightforward. It's just one line of command that's required, but again, you need to have a matching config on the client as well. Okay, the last features we're going to look at is allowing a local access to the client. So let's say instead of doing a split uh, tunnel, you want to do a non split tunnel. So everything coming from the client, you want it to be tunnel to your head end device. But when you have that, enable the client would not be able to access the local resources for example printers or if they have like a local storage IP storage so first we're gonna go ahead and remove the split tunnel configuration so that would be under the group and we have an ACL defined so we go no ACL easy VPN as TACL so before we connect to the we connect the V or establish the VPN that's trying to ping a local IP um, there's the switch IP dot four on the VLAN 128 that we can use as a test IP you can see we can ping successfully now let's launch our VPN uh, let's make sure I let's switch that back to UDP for now and launch the VPN 
give it a second, connect it. And if it's trying to ping again, you can see you can no longer ping because that ping packet is now tunneled across the IPsec channel. Since we're doing a non-split tunnel, if you look at statistic and route detail, now instead of having that VLAN 32 uh, subnet show up, it's just all zero, which includes all the traffic. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and enable the allow local VLAN features, and the command to do that is include local LAN. Okay, basically just one command. But you also need to make modification to the client. And right here with the transport, there's a little checkbox to say allow local LAN access. So we need to go ahead and check that. And once it's connected, as you see in a second, go back to statistic with route detail. Here on the left hand side, under the local LAN routes, there's a subnet of the of the um, of the local LAN that the the PC has on the network interface connected network interface. So we go ahead and try to ping while we are still on VPN the 122.4. You can see it's now allowing the traffic to access the local subnet. Okay, so that's it for our video on remote access IPsec VPN with the pre sure key and certificate authentication. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.